So the range for number one should be 30. Highest number minus lowest number. You son of a gun. It's all right. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Just go and mask in here, and then the one kid shows up. So. I can sit six feet nope, apart if you want. No, nope, let's throw that mask back. All right, right. Yep. All right. This is fun. Yeah, I'm just vaccinated. Showed up, showed up late too, which is even better. Huh? The kids at home, huh? All right, so there you go. There's your range. All right, highest minus lowest. Next, interquartile range. That's a value I'm going to need you to find. Do I? I don't care that you guys know what it represents. I just need to know how do you guys find it. How do you find it? You take your third quartile value and subtract the first quartile value from it. So Q3 minus Q1. So where do I get those values? Now we're gonna go back to the list, okay? Those values, Q3 and Q1, can be found under one bar stats. So let's do it, Sp especially if this is your first time joining us this unit, Who, baby, you better buckle up and pay attention. So you go to stat, edit, if you have something, many of you probably have numbers in your list. Remember how to clear them out? You highlight the list on top, hit clear, enter, and they'll all wipe out for you. Okay, so highlight the list on top, clear, enter. All right, so everyone, please go ahead and in list one, type those scores found in example two. And I'll do the same thing. Where is my, there it is. As you're typing them, take a look at your screen, please. Make sure you didn't type in three numbers in one. All right, I always do that. That's always a struggle for me. 77. Type in all of them, even the repeaters we're typing in. I have a question. Yep, go ahead. I'm listening. Isn't there some time when you don't put the repeated numbers, but not for, not for the range? Or uh, I don't know, Caroline, to be honest. Um, I'm, I put in every single number I'm given into the list. So you don't even have to worry about putting in the repeaters or not. Okay. okay? So don't even worry about that. Okay, everyone make sure, one last look, make sure you got all your numbers in there. Make sure they're all two digit numbers except for 100. Okay, we're still going back to stat, calculate, one var stats. We're not gonna go anywhere else this unit. Stick with one var stats. All right, now, we talked about this on Thursday. I only have my numbers in one list. So the only thing showing should be L1. So if anybody has L2 in their frequency list, get it the heck out of there. I only have numbers in L1. So that's what I'm gonna tell my calculator. Now we go down to calculate. And you guys remember X bar is my mean from Thursday, Friday, X bar is the mean. Now you guys see Q1, 77. So the quartile one value is 77. Keep scrolling down, you'll find your quartile three value is 92. All right, so quartile one, 77, quartile three, 92. So we're gonna do 92 minus 77. So my interquartile range will be those two subtracted, 15. The middle, about the middle 50% of those numbers are 15 apart. That's what that means but I just need you to find it. Again, your calculator's doing the work. If you guys don't are just sitting home chilling, not doing a darn thing, and you don't know how to use your calculator, that's on you. Last value, so we got range we can do on our own. Interquartile range, the calculator can help us. Standard deviation, standard deviation. Get that one bar stat screen up again. All right, if you cleared it out, get it up again, please. Get those numbers back up. Okay, I just copied it down to my notes here. All right, get that screen back up. There are two types of standard deviation, two types. And I'll tell you what standard deviation means at the end here. Two types, one's called population. It looks like OX, I call it the OX, OX. Look on your screen right now, you should see OX right away. 
That's called population standard deviation. And then there's a second one called sample standard deviation. Sample, SX. Look for that on your screen right now. SX, that's sample standard deviation. You will be directed on a problem which one you need. It will say sample or population. Okay, you will be directed on every problem to which one you'll need. If you are not, please listen carefully. If you are not directed to, to use one over the other, you always use population. Okay, let me say that one more time. If there are no directions saying which one to use, you go with population. Okay, go with the population, the OX. All right, so sometimes a problem will not state which one to use. You go to the population. OX. Last thing before we start doing some problems together. What does this number mean? And please jot this down as a note right next to standard deviation. The lower the, lower the standard deviation, The lower the standard deviation, the closer, the closer the scores are. Okay, the lower the standard deviation, the closer the scores are. Here's, don't write the next part down, but I'll just show you what I mean right now. So let's say we just, we just took a polar quiz last unit, all right? We took a polar quiz and I calculated period two. Period two had a standard deviation OX of, I don't know, 4.6. That's what their standard deviation came out to be. And then I did the same thing for you guys, period five. And the standard deviation came out to be 2.2. As a teacher, this tells me you guys had scores that were closer together than period two. Their scores were more spread out than yours. So that's what it tells me, all right, how close scores are. All right, any issues? Because now I'm going to start calling numbers. So hopefully you're awake at home, actually have a packet, maybe writing down stuff. Who knows? All right, take a look at number one. I got set A and I got set B of numbers. We're not even going to put anything into a list. Just look at both sets. Which one should have the smaller standard deviation? I'm going to call on somebody here in a second. Remember what we just wrote down about small standard deviations. Which one of these two groups do you predict has a smaller standard deviation if we calculated it? A or B? Which one has the smaller standard deviation? All right, here you go. Let's start it up. Five. Ella, which one do you predict has the smaller one? I said B. Darn right you did. Because everyone take a look. All those scores in B are a heck of a lot closer than they are in A. So you know set B because scores are closer together. All right, that's how standard deviation works. The smaller it is, the closer the scores are. Everyone see that? Understand that now. All right, let's actually calculate some standard deviations. Let's actually get numbers now. So I got two families. I got the Millers and I got the Lopez's. Can you help me find the mean and the standard deviation for both families? All right, I know the mean's pretty easy because you guys can just add them up and divide by how many, but your calculator is going to get you standard deviation. So let's do Miller's first. So everyone go to your list. I know it, only three numbers are gonna be in there, but hey, if you wanna find the mean by hand, go ahead, but you gotta use your calculator to do standard deviation. So let's go to our list, clear them out. Stat edit, let's clear it. And we have, let's see. And then I'm gonna see uh, what you got for me. 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 14. 
put one family in at a time, please. One family in at a time, stat, calculate, one var stats. You only have it in list one, so keep it like that. No need to put L2 in. Calculate. All right, so I'm gonna ask somebody right now, what was your mean? And notice, hey, notice how it doesn't say sample or it doesn't say population. It just says standard deviation. We go with population then. If no standard deviation is specified, you go with population. And you can round that to the nearest 10th for me. So somebody give me the mean and the standard deviation for the Miller family only, Miller family only. Eight, Colin, wanna give me the mean and the standard deviation to the nearest 10th? And no Colin, all right. Ella, gonna go back to you, save us here. How about the mean and the standard deviation, Ella? The mean is 12 and the standard deviation one point six. Good job. Yep, perfect. Twelve, one point six. And she got that right from one of our stats. All right, go ahead. Everyone clear out your Miller family list and now do it for the Lopez family. Same thing. What's the mean? Standard deviation, population, four to the nearest tenth. So clear out your Lopez, I mean your Miller family list and put the Lopez kids in and same thing, one bar stats. Okay, when you're ready, let me know what they are. Mason, when you're ready, let me know the mean and the population. Standard deviation. Mean is 10. Yep. And deviation 3.7. Good. All right, so what did we just learn here about the Miller versus the Lopez kids? We'll look at their standard deviation. Miller kids were 1.6, Lopez's were 3.7. I know we could have looked at the numbers and said this, but the standard deviation concludes it. Miller kids closer in age, okay? Because their standard deviation was lower. So Miller children closer in age. Just wanted to prove the point there that the lower the standard deviation, the closer they are. All right, questions from you guys, anything? One more, and this is this last one here is basically finding everything we've talked about so far this unit. Okay, so you have 30 students in Algebra 2. There's your tables. You know where they're going, right? So go ahead, now you got two lists going, a grade column and a frequency column. Go ahead. Put those in your list. Again, after you're done, take a quick peek. Did I get all my numbers in? Does everything match up on my tables? Of course it does not. 
Come on, Carl, you know. Four, five, three. Okay, everyone's good? All right, first question is uh, determine the five number summary. All right, so go stat, calculate, one var stats. Now you got two lists, be careful, you got two lists now. So make sure frequency list, you get L2 in there. Second, number two button. Okay, if you use two lists, L2 has got to go under frequency list. Calculate it. All right, here you go. Here's your five number summary. I don't know if you back in the day, ninth grade, if you guys uh, remember doing box and whisker plots at all, you got a five number summary to create them, but it's okay if you don't. First number in the five number summary is the minimum value. What's the minimum score here? Your calculator does have it. I don't know why it gives it to you, but it does. Min, you can just look at the table too. The smallest score is 65. There's your first one. Second number in the summary, here we go. Now we're gonna go quartiles. Cute quartile one. Quartile one. It's right on your uh, calculator, 60, sorry, 65. Just happens to match, that's just coincidence. Now, there is something called quartile two, but it's also called the median. We refer to it as the median. Q2 is the median. And keep scrolling down. There's more values than that on the screen. Keep scrolling down. 79. You guys can probably guess what's coming next. Q1, Q2, the median, Q3, quartile three. 88. And finally, five. If we found the min, our final number in the five number summary is our max. And that'll be 100. All righty. I'm going to turn this over to you guys for the next three questions. Interquartile range. Look back in your notes if you forgot how to find it. Interquartile range. What is it? Look back at your notes. See, hey, hopefully you're taking notes. Because if not, hey, no idea. Interquartile range. You better Google that sucker pretty darn quick. All right, interquartile range, who's got it? 12, Dan, interquartile range. Choo, choo, choo. 21. 20, how do you get 21? Uh, don't, oh wait. It's 23. 23, how'd you get it? So are the rest of your classmates now? Uh, I did, uh, Q3 minus Q1. There you go. Q3 minus Q1. That gives you 23. If I could write it correctly, that would be great. Uh, minus 65. 23. All right. Mean to the nearest tenth. It's right there on your screen. Mean to the nearest tenth. Caroline, what do you got? Mean to the nearest tenth. 79.5. Good. Remember, that's X bar, everyone. X bar, 79.5. Good job so far, you two. Let's finish this strong now. How about the population? Now I am specifying population. The ox. Population standard deviation to the nearest tenth for me. Let me just make sure I know it. Yep. Okay, nearest tenth. What do you got? Dan, going back to you, population standard deviation, nearest tenth? Um, 11.7. All righty, everybody, 11.7. All right, we all good with those, because now I'm going to go into something different to end class, how we're going to use the standard deviation and the mean together. Any issues finding those values on your calculator? If you're, hey, honestly, if you're not matching me, it's probably because you typed something wrong in your list. One number off can throw it all off. All right, so here we go. Part E, what is the, how many scores fall within one standard deviation of the mean? So let me go over that terminology here first. What is within one standard deviation of the mean? 
What is that asking me to do? All right. Well, what is the mean, first of all? Going back, Caroline gave us the mean is 79.5. And I want to find how many scores fall within one standard deviation of that. All right. So I got the mean. We also know Dan gave us the standard deviation, 11.7. Within one means I'm going to take my mean, add the standard deviation to find one above. So plus 11.7. And I'm going to go in the other direction and subtract the standard deviation. That's within one standard deviation. Subtract it on one end, add it on the other. Go ahead, find out what those scores are right now. So I take within one. Within one means one above, so I add it, and one below, and I, I subtract it. So everyone take 79.5, add your standard deviation, get a new score, and subtract it. And then we'll talk. Okay, so what did we end up with here? What's our range? Is there a champ would you get? Uh, that one? Yep. 91.2. 91.2, and on the other end? 67.8. 67.8. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to our table, and I wanna know how many scores are between 67.8 and 91.2. That'll be, that'll be the number of scores that fall within one standard deviation of the mean. So everyone go back to your table with me. I'm gonna go score by score and you tell me if it fits or not. 65, nope, that's not within that, right? So that's out. 74, yeah, that falls in there. 79, yep. 85, 88. 94, no, no. And I'm not even going to keep going because none of the rest will. Now, if I called on somebody right now, somebody would probably say, oh, there's four scores that fall within there. Four, because that's what I circled. But it's a frequency table. Remember, the number 88 happened not once, but three times. Three. 85, four times. So the answer is not four. I got to add up how many each of them happened and get a total from there. So add up how many times those four scores occurred, and that'll be my final answer. And as you guys add them up, I don't need to call anybody here. Three plus four plus five plus three, 15 students scored within one standard deviation of the mean, 15. So within one, I add and subtract the standard deviation. All right, let me change the, any questions there before I change it a little bit. All right, part F, what's the probability you pick a student who fell within one? All right, you guys did the hard work already. You know how many students fall within one. Probability is what's your chances now that you pick a student that fell within one? All right, well, it's gonna be a fraction and we already know 15 students fell within one. What are the chances I pick one? So what's my denominator have to be? Out of all of them, right? 15 out of blank, okay? That will be my probability. 15 out of, you guys go ahead and add them up. And I'll show you how you can find that number pretty quickly on your calculator. And you guys are finding there's 30 students. It also told us in the directions. So 15 out of 30 is the probability that I pick one within one. Also, I don't know if anybody had their one var stat screen still up. You have an N equals value on that screen. You could see it on mine if you don't, N equals. That'll always tell you how many numbers you put in. 
All right, so n equals always tells you how many numbers you put in. All right, good job. Last one now. What percent? Now I change the wording. I don't say within one. I say more than one standard deviation. Above the mean. Okay, so what percent of scores were more than one above the mean? Well, everyone go back to part E. What was the score that was one above the mean? Anybody want to shout that out for me? What was the score that was one above the mean? One standard deviation above the mean. What was above it? Above. Thanks, Caroline. It was 91.2. So what we're looking for is anything above 91.2. More than one above the mean. If I said more than one below the mean, I'd be looking for anything less than 67.8. All right, but since this said above, I went to the right, saw the 91.2. Go ahead, kids, count up how many scores are uh, above 91.2. And don't tell me three. Add them up, add them up. How many scores are above 91.2? I'll go back to the numbers one last time. Four. Anna, how many scores? Nick, sorry. You think I would know this week 38? Six. Six scores. All right, Nick, stay with me here. It doesn't say how many, it doesn't ask for how many scores, Nick. It says a percent of scores. So six out of how many? 30. 30. There you go. You want to turn that in a percent to end this day? 20%. 20%. Kids on fire. Animal. 20%. So one above, I add, one below, I subtract. All right, within one, I do both because you're gonna have to do it tomorrow for me. Any questions or comments before we end this thing? Whew. Know how to use your calculator, right? All right, guys, I'll see you for the assignment tomorrow. See you later.